Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. Happy Friday. Hallelujah. It is a rainy Friday morning here in little old Newburgh, North Carolina. But guess what? It is Friday. The weekend is here and I get some days off. So I am glad about it. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know who I am, I am Grace Amber. I, I come on different platforms. Whenever God gives me words, I come on and I share it with you. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be among to live in this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. I have a quick, quick uh, word for y'all today. I had already recorded this and then I had some net that was flying in front of me that was just worrying me to death. So I had to delete that and now I'm re-recording it. I'm running a little short on time, but I'm going to give it to you anyway because it's necessary. I have a word for y'all today and I want to talk to y'all about coping during the process. There is a cliche there is a saying uh, that we have, and a lot of these sayings and these cliches that we have, if we really knew what they meant, we probably would not say them so much. We probably would not be so quick to make these posts and these um, these quotes and these images with these quotes on. We probably would not be so quick to say that because we don't understand what it entails. I want to talk to y'all today about the cliche of trust the process. That's what I want to talk to you about today. See, the process, right? that everybody talks about and it sounds so good trust the process right it sounds so simple but part of the process is very unpleasant and that's what i want to talk to y'all about today this is not going to be a feel-good message it's actually probably going to to raise some some antennas on some people but i got to give it to you anyway and be obedient right so as we talk about trusting the process Oftentimes y'all will hear people like me, people who God gives words to share and the Holy Spirit will come in and tell us things to get up here and share with y'all. Y'all love the feel good messages. You love the messages about how God is going to take you to the next level. You love the messages about how God is going to transform you. You love the messages about the blessings. You love the messages about how God is going to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Y'all love those messages. And quite frankly, I do too, right? And all those things are very true, but here is what I want to talk about today is that there is a middle point right in between have have nots and having there is a middle point there's a midway point and that's the part of the process that I want to talk about today that can be very excruciatingly painful and I want to tell you why it can be so painful here's the deal so many of us are loyal at heart and what we have done unbeknownst to us is that we have pledged allegiance to things that are contrary to God's will for us. What we have done, we have pledged allegiance and vowed to remain loyal to people, to remain loyal to relationships, to remain loyal to places, to remain loyal to things, to remain loyal to habits. We have made allegiances and pledged allegiances and vowed to remain loyal to things that are contrary to God's will for us. Here's the problem with that. Because we have done that, there are soul ties and connections that we can't see. We just say it and profess it with our mouth. But what we don't understand is the connection that is taking place in the spiritual realm when we pledge allegiance to things that are contrary to God's will for us. And so as we look at our current situation, right, and we listen to these messages where people tell you about how there's going to be a transfer of wealth and how God is going to bless you and elevate you and give you new life and all these other things, right? God is not going to take you from being in the projects today to being in a mansion tomorrow with no process. God is not going to take you from being somebody whose credit score is 100, right? And then give you, and whose bank account is always in the negative and then give you a million dollars, right? And give you all these uh, lines of credit. He's not going to do it. You know why? Because there's a process that has to take place in the middle. And you know why that process has to take place? God has to break all the ties. God has to break all these allegiances and these vows and these spiritual soul ties and connections that you have made over the years that you have remained so loyal to, all these habits that are contrary to God's will for your life, guess what? In the middle of going from having not to having, guess what? There is a process and God has to come in and break out the things that are not good in your life. God has to break out anything that is going to jeopardize the new life that he has for you. And so my message for today, I want to talk to you about how to cope as you are going through the breaking process. The more loyal you are at heart, and though in the world, being loyal to people, places, and things, that is a wonderful characteristic. You know why that's so great in the world? Because it makes you easy to be used. People love people who 
are loyal, who are loyal at heart, who will not cross them. Those are the people who the world often chews up and spits out. And so that loyal characteristic is great in the world, but it causes you as you cross over into the kingdom, it causes you to have to go through more because God has to break that out of you. He has to take those loyalties that you have to everything that is contrary to his will for your life. He's got to take those things and break them out of you. And in the midst of that process, it can be very painful. And there of those of us who have been through so much already that we can't imagine what God could possibly do. We've been broke before. We've been hungry before. We've been, we've gone through the depths before. We've been beat on before. We've been addicted and strung out before. So there are those of us who are children of God who have already been through so much and we look at it and we say, my God, what else can God do that can break me at this point? Yeah, but God knows your breaking point and there is a breaking point. There is something or somebody, there is something that you hold dear to your heart and don't think that God won't touch it in order to break you to get you to your next level. And let me tell you, as you're going through that breaking process, it's going to break you. You know, I, I mean that because I've been through that before. It's going to break you. And mentally, you may even break. God may even break you mentally to bring you back and put you back together to again, again, to make you into this new creature. And so today I want to talk to you about how to cope during the process. I'm going to give you a scripture. And of course, I'm still in Colossians. Let me give it to you. It is Colossians, the third chapter, and it's just two verses. And they read, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, right? Guys, as you're going through the process, it's not going to feel good. But get ready for the blows for some of us because it's time to go to your next season. But as you're getting ready to go to your next season, there are things in you that will break. That's a better way to put it. There are things in you that God intends to break away and break off of you in order to get you to your next level. And as you're going through this process, as these blows start coming, right? And you are wondering what in the world is going on. All hell is breaking breaking loose on every hand in every area of your life hell starts breaking loose right when you start seeing the loved ones that you hold so dear to your heart you start seeing them on obituaries when you start going through these things to go to your next level right you are going to have to have a coping skill right to make it through that and what that is what the coping skill is that you need to make it through that is to set your mind on things that are not earthly. You have to keep your eyes on God and he is going to keep you during the process because he knows just what he's doing and he knows that you're going to make it out all right. And he knows that this process is necessary in order for you to get to the next level. Let me say something real quick for those of you who are saying, you know what, before I lose my loved ones and before I go through all this, let me just stay in the world. Let me help you to understand and one thing before I end this video, right? Your story was written before you even got here. And there is no bypassing or avoiding what is to come in your life. See, what was written will be. And there is no bypassing that. Now, you can make it harder on yourself by trying to go back and turn back from God and go back to your wicked ways, you can make it harder on yourself, but this you will not avoid and you will come voluntarily or involuntarily. You don't have a choice, unfortunately. So don't make it harder on yourself by turning back from God and saying, I don't want to have to go through that. You're going to go through it and you're going to go through more if you turn back. Okay. So I just wanted to give you all this quick word. I know it's not a feel good message, but it's something that you're going to need. You're going to have to put this in your toolbox. You're going to need it one day. And for those of us who have already been through the breaking process, right? Still put this in your toolbox because the time is going to come when the storms arise again. I love you. I am Grace Amber. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. I'll be right back on Monday with another word. Good Lord willing.